What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be having a look at five players that Manchester City could sign this summer. We haven't got much transfer news if I'm completely honest over the last 24 hours so I haven't got enough to do a, a normal transfer update but I do want to have a look at some players that Man City could sign and try and make that as entertaining as possible for you guys to enjoy. It is a transfer video so I'm counting it towards my daily Manchester City transfer updates. There we go. Allow it, okay? But before I crack on with this video, make sure, like always, if you are enjoying the content, you want to help to support my channel, and do subscribe. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on. 19k subscribers, that's what I'm aiming for. Less than 900 subs away. I'm doing daily Manchester City transfer updates for everyone to enjoy. So if you want to stay up to date first and fast with the latest Manchester City transfer news every single day this summer, then do subscribe. It is free. Don't forget also social media links. They're in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. My email also in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. I'm looking for a sponsor for these daily Manchester City transfer updates. So if that is something that floats your boat then do let me know via my email. You can also go and follow me on Twitch as well. Link to that is in the description. I'm going to be doing some live streams over on there starting in August for everyone to enjoy more additional JSGC content. So I know everyone's looking forward to that. Leave a thumbs up as well if you do enjoy this video. 300 likes once more is the like goal and also don't forget to leave your thoughts of who you want Man City to sign this summer in the comments below. Without further ado, let's crack on with this video. We're going to start off first by having a look at Harry Kane, the man that everyone's speaking about joining Manchester City this season. It's going to be a very complicated, very difficult transfer for us to be able to get done. And I'm saying that mainly because Daniel Levy, who's in charge of transfers and in charge of Tottenham Hotspur, is so difficult to negotiate with. He will not budge on the price. We know that Man City will be looking at 80 to 100 million pounds to spend on a striker to find their long-term Sergio Aguero replacement and quite frankly that isn't going to be enough to bring Harry Kane in. City have spoken about swapping players. I don't see Man City swapping any players to bring in Harry Kane. It makes this transfer very difficult and I, I think that if Tottenham do not budge on their price they're wanting like 130 to 150 million pounds has been chucked out there. Uh, so I just don't see Man City going anywhere near that price doesn't make sense to do that in the current covid uh, business markets either and so it makes this transfer very difficult i want to sit here and say six or seven out of ten for realism and this could really happen and get really excited if there isn't developments in tottenham don't budge on their price then i just don't see how this transfer could be done and i can see man city looking at other alternatives uh, in uh, in terms of either players in the same position or looking at other positions instead um, to me, I think this is a 3 or a 4 out of 10 in terms of happening. And whilst I'd like Harry Kane at City, because I think he'd bag a lot of goals, I'm not sure I see it happening. But things can change in the summer. Always happens. Like I always say, the summer is long. I'll keep my eyes and ears open for developments with regards to that. Now, looking at the second player that City could well sign this summer, moves on to an alternative for Harry Kane. Uh, pretty realistic, comes in the form of Romelu Lukaku. Now, I'm giving this a 6 out of 10 for realist uh, for realism here. And I'm saying that because Inter Milan, uh, the price that they're looking for, will fall into Man City's uh, price range of what they'll be looking to find their long-term Sergio Aguero replacement. Um, we know that Man City, like I said, are looking at around 80 to 100 million pounds is what they're going to be spending on a striker. And I feel like in that budget could well bring in Romelu Lukaku. We have heard from uh, Italian sources close to Inter Milan saying that they're looking for around 100 million euros for Lukaku. They believe that's enough to scare off all the clubs around Europe and around the world of interest in Lukaku and City could well want to pay that price to bring in Lukaku. Lukaku has uh, great working relationships of course with Kevin De Bruyne. He's a uh, uh, Belgium teammate of course uh, they link up really well in the international scene and so I feel like it's a partnership that could work really well in the Premier League for Man City as well we know that Lukaku is Premier League experienced and yes he's played for Man United and yes it didn't work out it doesn't stop him from being a top quality striker look how well he did for Everton when all the responsibilities were taken away from him and you actually sat him up top and said to Lukaku your job is to score goals he does that and boy does he do that well uh, will Man City allow that? That remains to be seen. If Man City just want a goal scorer that's going to sit inside the 18-yard box and 
shoot and score goals. Lukaku is the man. He's a man that will do that and he will get goals for Manchester City. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it is definitely a, a contingency to Harry Kane for Man City to have a look at this summer. Do I think it will be Lukaku? No, I don't. However, certainly don't think he should be dismissed. I certainly do think he's a player that City should be having a good look at this summer when it comes to uh, alternatives to Harry Kane. Now, moving on to player number three that could well join Manchester City is Jack Grealish. Pretty much the same as uh, Harry Kane here. We're looking at a very expensive, very complicated transfer to get done. The one big advantage I feel like we have with Grealish over Harry Kane is I do feel like Grealish uh, could say to Aston Villa this summer that uh, he's got this chance of a lifetime to go and join Manchester City. He wants to solidify himself as an England international. He wants to be playing Champions League football and at this moment in time, Aston Villa cannot offer that to him. And so I feel like we do have a stepping stone there uh, from moving from Aston Villa to where Man City are at right now is uh, a step in the positive direction for Jack Grealish's career. That's no disrespect to Aston Villa, of course. I rate them. They're a club on the up. Uh, I think they're a very well-run club. Um, I really enjoy uh, when I visited Villa Park Park as well, and they're a good set of fans and everything, so I'm not saying this with any disrespect at all to Aston Villa, uh, but I do feel like Manchester City would be the next step up. Man City currently the Premier League champions, looking to try and win the Champions League as well, and Jack Grealish will want to meet that with the ambition as well, and he does offer creativity to Manchester City. We've got an abundance of creativity already, uh, but it would certainly add a different dimension to Manchester City, and what signing Jack Grealish would do would free up in the striking position, because I know for a fact that if we do bring Grealish in in the summer we won't be signing a striker as well because that'd be very expensive we're not going to do two big transfers in one summer uh, so Grealish was brought in it means one of Man City's wide players would move up top whether that would be Ferran Torres and or Raheem Sterling that could happen then Jack Grealish could well come into either play uh, in the left hand side for Manchester City or go into the centre as well would free up Bernardo Silva going out wide uh, would free him up to go in the centre if Grealish was to go out wide and Phil Foden as well uh, the same of what I've just said uh, about Bernardo Silva so definitely a, a, an attacking creative option there for Manchester City. Is he what we need? I'll be honest. No, he isn't what he, uh, we'd need. But if the transfer can be done, we can bring in top quality homegrown players like Jack Grealish, then I'm not going to say no. And if Man City can get a good deal to bring Grealish in as well, and by a good deal, I, I, we've, been, we've been speaking about £100 million. Personally, I wouldn't price Jack Grealish at £100 million, but uh, we, we've not put in any offers, we've not spoken with Aston Villa, so we don't quite know what the prices we're looking at for, uh, for, for Jack Grealish. So we'd have to wait and see with that. Uh, I'm on the fence with this one. Five out of ten for realism. It's one of those that could quickly become a 1 or a 2 out of 10 he's committing to Aston Villa it could easily accelerate to an 8 or a 9 out of 10 for realism again just like I said with Harry Kane it's one of those that I'll keep my eyes and ears open for you guys. Now moving on to player number four, this is interesting, is Nuno Mendes. He isn't going away. Manchester City, we know, have been interested then have cooled their interest. That's mainly down to the situation at left back. However, with recent rumours going around that Benjamin Mendy is wanted by Inter Milan, if Benjamin Mendy was to leave Manchester City, we would need a fullback. And Nuno Mendes ticks the boxes. Uh, he doesn't have to be registered as a player, of course, being under the age of 21. He showed a lot of promise for Sporting Club de Portugal uh, in the last season as well in uh, in the Portuguese First Division. He's had a very good season for Sporting CP as well, uh, and he's highly rated. Apparently can be brought in for his release clause of 70 million euros. I don't see Man City paying 70 million euros for him, if I'm completely honest. But uh, I do feel like there is negotiations there, and I do feel like around 50 million euros, which is normally the going rate for four back when Man City wants to bring them in. Uh, could well be a leeway there for Sporting CP. Uh, we know that they're interested in a couple of Man City players as well. I feel like you chuck in a 40 to 50 million euro uh, euros deal out there and add in a player or two like Pedro Porro as well and boom you have yourself a deal done and sorted with Benjamin Mendy leaving as well. I will put out a disclaimer though no left back will be brought in by Manchester City unless a left back leaves and you would think that if there is one to leave it would be Benjamin Mendy. Uh, if Min Mendy leads, I would say this transfer probably is quite a realistic transfer. We're probably looking at an 8 out of 10. If Mendy, however, doesn't leave, 0 out of 10. We ain't signing a left back. 
there we go. Now moving on to player number five, a complete contingency. We have um, backup A, backup B, and we move on to backup C here, and it comes in the form of Danny Ings. He's going to turn down a new deal at Southampton. If Man City come calling for him, I'm confident we could get a deal done to bring in Danny Ings. If Man City want a striker to compete with Gabriel Jesus up top, we don't want to bring in Jack Grealish, for example. We've not had a great summary, but it's promised so much and delivered so little. Danny Ings could be a player that is brought in, and I know what everyone thinking everyone's going to say that's really underwhelming and I don't want that however uh, he is a decent striker he will score gold and I can think definitely of worse options of players that may come off the bench uh, or our players are needing a rest and we've got Danny Ings there to help make the numbers let's not forget he is homegrown as well I think the only downside to Danny Ings is that his injury track record isn't brilliant which means he'd fit in perfectly at Manchester City because we love injury prone players so realism there 10 out of 10 I'm just kidding uh, it all depends on if City make a move I'd probably chuck it down at a 3 out of 10 uh, I want to say we're in the early stages of the summer window we're not um, it's starting to develop further and further as the European Championships and the Copper America are coming to an end City are going to have to commit to see what uh, transfers are going to get done we're heading into pre-season pretty soon so the next two or three weeks are going to be very interesting for the direction that City are going to go in for this summer transfer window is it going to be exciting is it going to be two or three players in or is it going to be boring is it going to be no players in or maybe just one player in and it's underwhelming we'll have to wait and see the next two to three weeks very crucial like I said daily transfer updates for Manchester City for everyone to enjoy to stay up to date with so don't forget to subscribe press that red button press the bell and put your push notifications on also don't forget social media links in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my twitter and instagram email also in the description below too but to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries leave a thumbs up as well if you do enjoy this video 300 likes is the aim let me know your thoughts in the comments below who do you want manchester city to sign this summer and why and lastly like i said go and follow me on my twitch link to that is in the description too as i will be doing some live streams from august for everybody to enjoy as well as doing my youtube content so i'll see everyone again tomorrow for the next daily manchester city transfer update hopefully we will have news so i'll see you then so i've been jsgc thank you everyone for watching i hope everyone is safe and well peace ciao for now